A new version of uh, the GGI Fly app. And in the last video, I did a small test of how this performed on the iOS. But today, we are going to take the Android version for a spin. And at the same time, I will answer a question that I got regarding uh, the point of interest that I normally use in my videos. And I thought this location here would be kind of interesting uh, to try this out. Because this is actually the back side of the castle. You normally see it from the front side, but today you will get a chance to see it from the back side. So there it is. So let's raise it up here. Let me just zoom in so I can show you. So there you can see it. Fredensborg Castle. Just put a little bit higher here. And the Royal Garden, you can see that one below, and you can also see the Orangerie. I don't know what that's called in English. <laughs> but the great building that you see down there, that's where they grow all sorts of uh, exotic uh, vegetables. All right, I'm not allowed to fly over the premises. So, uh, but I just want to say one thing is that the, the colors, they look really, really nice. And this is because today we are using this set of uh, free rail filters and I'm using a uh, ND16 uh, with the polarizer. So that's one from the bottom row here with the rotating ring here. Um, let's just go in here and verify that we have the right software running here. It's a 1510. So everything is uh, supposed to, uh, it's like it's supposed to be. I'm using the smart controller, but this is basically the same if we are using the smart controller or using uh, the Android phone as it is. So when uh, to address this uh, point of interest thing, there's uh, basically multiple, multiple ways of doing this. And uh, we can use some of the built-in functionality in the drone. We can use one of the quick shot modes, of course. So if you go here to the quick shot mode here, I can select circle and I can take this one away and I can highlight the castle here. And I probably want to want it to go this way and then I can press start and then it would do what you would expect it to do that it will try to keep the castle in frame while it's rotating. The problem with that is that it's normally not doing it very well and you don't have the option to zoom in on the image. So Basically, I don't recommend that uh, approach. You should just learn to do this manually. You see, now it lost the subject. Maybe I could have done a better job uh, framing it, but let's oh, just stop the screen recorder. I shouldn't do that. So start the screen recorder again. So what I basically could do here instead is just switch it into normal plain video mode. And uh, when I do this, I can set it to record, and then I can basically if I want to, put it in tripod mode because that makes the exercise a little bit easier. So the trick here is to do the manual orbit is that you need to move the drone in this direction the same time you're counter, you're counter turning the drone like this. So let's just do a better example here. So if I go the opposite direction, I need to move the, the roll to the right while I'm yawing a little bit to the left. So let's just do that. So right now, I just need to get this to move. So, and then you just need to keep your fingers very, very steady and then just let it run. And that way you can do a very, very, very nice uh, recording like this. Let's just stop the drone here just for a second here and leave the castle in the middle here. So, so the idea is very, very simple. If you need to rotate clockwise around the castle, you need to move with the, the pitch and roll, you need to roll it to the left. So you need to counter compensate with the yaw stick so you keep the image in frame. And then a pro tip here is, uh, as you probably have seen, is that I'm using these uh, lines that will help me. 
I can also use the cross here. Maybe that will make it even easier. So I can put the cross wherever I want to rotate around. So when I do the rotation now, so I move to this side, I move to the left now. And I actually prefer to do it in, uh, in the normal mode because if you are that far away from an object, you would get a lot more motion. So now it's moving to the left and then you see, then I'm counter compensating with the yaw. So now it's just simply rotating and you can see that the intersection between the lines that stays onto the castle. And now I need to stop because I don't want to get arrested for flying on the royal property. This is actually where the queen lives in the summer. Half of the year she lives at Fredensborg Castle. So instead of using a point of interest, it's much, much easier just to learn these skills and fly it by yourself because that will help you a lot when, uh, when you are trying to do like a manual point of interest. We'll try to skip a hooser here as well. Maybe we just go to the normal. So when I move it to this direction, when I move it to the left here, then I need to counter compensate. It's very, very important that you keep your hands fixed and you will probably not be able to use all the footage because there is stuff that sneaks in. <laughs> they are like unwanted motions. But at least if you keep going and you have enough footage, you'll be able to use some of it. So this was basically the principle of uh, doing a manual uh, orbit, which is a skill that I think every drone pilot should have. So it seems everything is uh, kind of working like it's supposed to with the 1510 of the DJI Fly app. I also have not seen any of the connection connectivity issues that I've heard some of you uh, report. Look at these uh, beautiful bright blue colors. They are definitely a result of me using uh, the polarizer filters. It is a blue sky, but it is not as blue as you see it in the image. That's for sure. So that can, you can, I can definitely recommend that you pick up uh, polarizing filters uh, for this purpose. The, the footage is slightly underexposed with 0 0.1 stop that will uh, make sure that I preserve all the nice highlights, especially in the white areas of uh, the castle here in the background. Let's just stop the video here and then just press it into, um, yeah, into the pro mode, into the manual settings. And let's just see where we are. Let's see if I can press this one. I can, and I can take the ISO down to 100, which I should when I'm out filming in this, these types of conditions. I can see that the filter is not dark enough. The In the uh, 16 that I used is not dark enough. So I need to sort of double, four quarter double the frame rate to get the exposure level uh, to zero or slightly underexposed. So the learning from that would be that I would probably need to select uh, ND32 which is uh, twice as dark as uh, the ND16 uh, that I'm using uh, right now. And just make sure that we don't exaggerate the movements, even though the, the shutter speed is higher, and then we should basically be fine. Some of you that are making drone videos or making videos for YouTube have asked me, how do you actually get some traction on your videos? And it's very simple. I'm just very strategic about how I... Uh, select my titles and keywords on my uh, videos to make sure that they show up when you search for something of interest. And I use a tool that is called TubeBuddy, which is a plugin that I put into my browser that will allow you to see what keywords have the highest ranking when you're searching for stuff. This is a very, very useful tool that I use all the time. They have a paid version that will unlock all sorts of features, but they also have a free version that will allow you to test it out for yourself at your convenience. You can even get suggestions about the strength of a keyword as well as the search volume. And that works in the free version, even though it's limited to a few searches per day. But there's definitely something that is worth trying if you want to optimize the performance of your YouTube videos. What is your go-to move every time that you're out flying your drone? I like the point of interest. Definitely, I like that. But I also like 
just playing with the gimbal like this just to basically uh, make some emphasis on uh, the location where I am parked right now down here. Those of you that know me know that I also like this these top-down shots, especially when I'm going to land my drone. And uh, let's just try that for now. And uh, this crosshair really helps me a lot when uh, I'm aiming to the drone here. Let's just switch it into video here and do a little bit of recording here. Let's just get it down here okay. and start the recording. So. so this part helps me to aim. <laughs> and I'm not going to land there. Woo. So, so I can just move it here and center it above the roof like that. And I can simply concentrate on that part. Instead of trying to land it by looking through the roof, this is a much, much easier operation. And you might have seen the video already where I crashed the drone twice during a weekend, which was quite unfortunate. Um, and uh, in case that you missed that video with the nice scenery of Orbi Harbor, um, then I will make sure to include that somewhere up here in a card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.